wasn't ready to talk about yet because I wasn't sure which direction I was going to go. But uh, sleeping on this for a few nights and um, trying to make come up with a few tough decisions. But this morning I um, relieved Steve Wilkes of his duties. Um, going to end up making a change here, defensive coordinator. But just where we're going, where we're at with our team, um, from a scheme standpoint and things like that, um, looking through it all throughout the year, through these last few days, um, I felt pretty strongly that this was a decision that was best for our organization. And even though it was one I didn't want to make, um, it was something that um, once I realized that I think a different direction is what's best for our organization, um, then it's something that I have to do. Kyle Shanahan is an incredibly talented tactician of football, but he's not suited to be an NFL head coach because he's a horrible liar. And he's admitted that. There are certain things he doesn't want to know because he doesn't want to have to lie. The way he answered the question about Steve Wilkes' status on his Tuesday season-ending press conference, when I saw those words, the way he did it, I thought, this guy's in trouble. This guy's in trouble. Because if he's safe, you're going to say in a full-throated, unequivocal way, what are you talking about? Of course he's coming back. And it was obvious from the way he answered the question. Not that he, the, the point is he didn't lie. The way right. he phrased it, the truth was there. It was hanging out there that Steve Wilkes was in trouble. And now Steve Wilkes is out as the defensive coordinator of the 49ers after one year. And he was brought in to run a defense he doesn't specialize in. The team had moments where, you know, the cover zero blitz against the Vikings at the end of the first half of the week seven Monday night game. That wasn't a good look. And eventually Kyle Shanahan admitted, hey, I could overrule it. And I didn't. He could have and he didn't. The lack of pursuit and effort, the words that were used by Steve Wilkes after the NFC Championship, that was unacceptable, as Wilkes said. But, Miles, last time they played Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl, they gave up 31 points. This time they gave up 19 in 60 minutes of regulation. This time the defense was giving the offense multiple chances to have more than a seven-point lead at the end of the first half. I don't know how it's Steve Wilkes' fault. And I know there has to be more to it behind the curtain. There has to be something that isn't easy for Kyle Shanahan or anyone else to express in sound bites at a press conference. But it just feels weird that a guy who comes in in his first year and takes you to the Super Bowl and holds Patrick Mahomes to 19 points in 60 minutes of regulation football deserves to be out there's a story that needs to be told and this is where PR becomes important for the 49ers because I think it's important their fans understand that this is something that Steve Wilkes deserved and he's just not the scapegoat because Kyle Shanahan is feeling the heat a little bit because the 49ers can't cash in I I do think that there's more to it than just what happened in the Super Bowl. And, you know, I mean, you pointed to two things that I was going to point to that, that week seven, zero blitz, you know, against Minnesota that allows Jordan Addison to go into the end zone. Right. I mean, that's something where the chemistry and the philosophy was not really correct between Kyle Shanahan and Steve Wilkes. And I think anytime you're coming in and you are running a defense that is not necessarily something that is, you know, inherent to you or what you would run, right? You're trying to take over somebody else's thing and adapt and adjust to it. That's going to be a little bit more difficult than just saying, hey, Steve Wilkes, what do you like to do? Let's do that. You know, the 49ers had a defensive scheme that was in place for a really long time, right? I mean, you go um, from uh, uh, Jets head coach uh, Robert Sala to then D'Amico Ryan's, Right, That was a lot of continuity that you had there. And then D'Amico Ryans goes and becomes a head coach and you bring in Steve Wilkes because he runs a four down scheme. But, and this is something that I've seen a lot of 49ers reporters say, you know, he was more of a defensive backs guy, right? Than he was front seven. And so part of the issue apparently is that the 49ers defense is more or less designed to be called from front to back rather than back to front. Now, that kind of sounds like a little bit of gobbledygook in some ways, but in others, I mean, I just, I look at the way the defense performed in some situations and you look at Kyle Shanahan in the middle of the game, I think in one of these critical third and fours, he like calls timeout before the defense goes out there and like before the Chiefs snap it because like he doesn't like what he's seeing out there. 
So it doesn't look great when the defensive coordinator gets fired after you go to the Super Bowl and you hold Patrick Mahomes 19 points in regulation. I, I, I get that, right? But at the same time, sometimes people aren't the right fit for the organization that they're in and the position that they're in an organization. So I, I think that this is a raw deal for Steve Wilkes. However, I just, I get it from Kyle Shanahan's perspective. On that issue of Steve Wilkes background as a defensive backs coach being a problem, that question came up yesterday. Here's the question and the answer from Kyle Shanahan. Have a listen to it. He was the first guy that you had as a coordinator that was had kind of a, a different background working with DBs and things like that. Uh, do you think there was some sort of disconnect there, not having you know a guy with a linebacker who kind of connect the front and the back well there? Uh, was that part of the issue here? Uh, yes, I think it was, and I don't think that just is solely because his background's DBs. I just think it, you know, it has to do with you know the way we play linebacker um, and stuff like that, and the way that you know Fred and Trey have done it here over the years, and the way we've coached it. And I mean, there's. That there's no one way to do things, but um, you want to tie things together. And Steve was always working to do that. Uh, there's no doubt about that. But um, it was just for for his background and how it ended up with us. It was just it was it was harder than it needed to be. And I felt it would improve us um, going a different direction. See, here's the problem I have with that. These are not factors that were hidden from Kyle Shanahan when he hired Steve Wilkes last year. Mm-hmm. You knew, that, you knew that this was going to be a problem. You knew that it was an issue. You knew that it was a difference in background that was going to manifest itself. What did you expect? He took you to the Super Bowl. He held Patrick Mahomes to 19 points. You knew there were going to be flaws. You knew there were going to be road bumps. You knew there were going to be struggles. And you still got to the Super Bowl and almost won the damn thing. What more do you want from the guy? That's what right. confuses me. This well, isn't like... Well, you know, we hired this guy thinking he was going to be one thing and he ended up being something else. We knew this wasn't going to be easy. We knew this was going to be a transition. We knew this was going to be difficult. Oh, and by the way, we almost won the Super Bowl despite it, and we're going to move on to somebody else because, you know what, we should have hired somebody else in the first place last year. We shouldn't have hired this guy. Sorry, sorry, we, we, we kind of made a mistake, even though our mistake almost delivered a Lombardi trophy. Uh, yeah, and that's what I mean that it's a raw deal, but I would go back to the game previously where the 49ers gave up damn near 150 yards rushing in the first half to the Detroit Lions. Like, that's where the problems were. And if, you know, Brandon Ayuk doesn't make a catch that should have been an interception, and if Jameer Gibbs doesn't fumble, and we can talk about Dan Campbell's fourth down decisions, then this is a decision that would have been made two weeks ago. I, I And... I think that people might have understood a little bit more. I like, but this is, I felt like throughout the course of the season, things were not right with the way that the 49ers have played defense in the past and the way that they would probably like to play defense in the future. So that, that's why I'm like, I, I, I don't want to say that, you know, I, I don't understand it. Cause I do. And that doesn't mean that, it's, a, you know, it's not wrong for Steve Wilkes, especially because now that the Super Bowl is over, there are all these defensive coordinator positions that are already filled. So it's like, man, you know, you kind of bleep this guy over for next year, even though you almost won the Super Bowl. Like, it's just, it's not a great situation, but I still understand it. I, and I don't know how much sense that makes. No, it, it makes, it makes some sense. I get what you're saying. And my guess is that Kyle Shanahan decided after the the win over the Lions that came the hard way, I got to make a change here. I got to make a change. Let's get through the Super Bowl and then we'll make our change. Unless we win, then it's kind of hard to make a change. Wouldn't that have been something if they'd won the Super Bowl and he fired Steve Wilkes anyway? Wouldn't that have been something? Yeah. But I feel like he made the decision without taking into account what might happen in the Super Bowl, and what happened wasn't enough to get him to change his mind. And I kind of thought that maybe he already knew who he's going to hire. The, the way he explained it yesterday, they're going to look inside, they're going to look outside, they're going to look everywhere. I, I, it, it dawned on me that, well, you know what? If the news that we eventually get is he's bringing in Mike Vrabel, or Pete Carroll, or Bill Belichick to run the defense, we're all going to say, yeah, sorry, Steve. <laughs> sorry, Steve. Sorry, you're, at least you're getting paid for the next couple of years, but we understand why the move was made. 
But if he's just firing him and embarking on a blank slate, I don't know where I'm going to go. I don't know what I'm going to do. It really does support this idea that after that first half of the Lions game, Kyle Shanahan said we got to make a change. Yeah, exactly. And that's but, but the the first half of the Lions game was really 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 bad. Like it was really bad. All right? Like it, it could not have been much worse defensively for the 49ers there. And that's where I I I really do kind of understand it. And it was in some ways the best thing that could have happened to the 49ers because then they came into the Super Bowl like the badasses we think that they are. Right? They played especially in that first half with intensity, with fire. They weren't just going to give up every, any sort of yardage. I mean, they made Pacheco fumble. It's just something he does not do. So there were a lot of encouraging things. I thought about the game plan that happened um, in the Super Bowl for the 49ers, but then you get the criticism from Nick Bosa that they weren't prepared for certain elements. And that's another thing where it's like, man, if your best player is saying that about your coaches, right? That's a problem. Okay, and whether it's a coaching problem or the player problem, we can debate that. But it's not good when that's what somebody says publicly. Here is what Nick Bosa said both after the game and then in the aftermath of the conclusion of the season about defending the Patrick Mahomes zone read runs in overtime. Yeah, the zone read got us a couple times. We could have been more prepared there. Um, we have to know in, in crucial situations who's going to have the ball, and obviously it's him. He had a scramble down the middle on that last drive. When you say that you guys just claim you could have been better prepared, I think you said for the you know, read option stuff that came at the end, people were like, oh, he's, he's dragging Wilkes. I mean, do you feel like just collectively you weren't prepared for those plays? Ah, uh, it's hard to say. You kind of have to anticipate Mahomes um, wanting to have the ball in his hands. Um, we play plenty of read option teams, so we have the answers for it. Um, but uh, I think uh, it's, it's tough when you play a team like that who has, uh, could beat you in a lot of different ways. Well, and see, that's the thing. It's not an indictment of Steve Wilkes. It's a recognition of the fact that there's only one Patrick Mahomes. You can't yes. be ready for everything Patrick Mahomes does because he can do everything. You take this away, he'll do that. You take that away, he'll do this. You take that away, he'll do the other thing. He can do it all. He can do it all. This was, and I was talking to somebody yesterday and hadn't thought of it this way, that play we just saw, that was the first time ever in Super Bowl history we had match point in a Super Bowl. You stop them on that fourth and one, and you win the championship. First time ever. And they failed. All they had to do was stop them on that play, and that was that. And were they ready for that? Well, they weren't ready for a lot of the things the Chiefs did because it's Patrick Mahomes, but they still held him to 19 points. So, look, when you first made the point about the players being prepared for everything, I mean, you could make the same criticism of Kyle Shanahan. Yes. They weren't bought in. They didn't understand. They didn't know what was going to happen in overtime. I just can't help but wonder whether or not, you know, and this, I'm going to, I'm going to be like certain broadcasters and not finish my sentence. I, 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 I want to make this point when you're, and this is indicative of the entire, this is indicative of the entire dynamic of the national football league. You become a head yeah, coach because you were really, really good at one, at one side of the ball or the other. And we see this all the time with offensive coordinators. You become a head coach because of your great work as an offensive coordinator, and that job continues to consume way too much of your total time to the point where you abdicate the defense to your coordinator. And I think that's probably one of the reasons why Kyle Shanahan did what he had to do. He is so caught up in offense that he doesn't want to have to worry about Defense. I mean, we have seen him age like a president since he became the head coach of the 49ers seven years ago. One of the things that probably worries him, at least this year, is can I really trust the guy that I have given the keys to the defense to? And do I really want to live another season that way, spending more time than I want worrying about our defense? 
because that takes me away from the thing that got me here, the thing that makes me a brilliant coach, the thing that had positioned me to potentially be the next Bill Belichick, although it's looking more like he's going to be the next Bud Grant based upon the past several seasons. Regardless, he wants to get back to the bread and butter, and he wants somebody that he can trust to take care of the other half of the team. That would be my guess as to ultimately why he did it. I don't want to spend another season constantly worrying about whether or not my defensive coordinator is going to do what he needs to do. Uh, it, the the thing that it is, is is he's going to do the things that we've always done and obviously when you've not been there the whole time that's going to be a little bit more difficult because hell he doesn't know the things that you've done the whole time right he's bringing in his own sort of philosophies and things like that and sometimes that works you know when you want to get other ideas from outside the building you want them to come in and you want them to help you improve but the 49ers were number one in points allowed and yards allowed in 2022. And they were still in the top 10 in both categories in 2023, but that was when Kyle Shanahan did not have to do those other things that he had to spend time on this year, right? And so, yeah, when he says it was more difficult than it needed to be, that's exactly what that means to me, Mike, that I, I, I don't necessarily want to spend more time on this than I've had to in the past because I had trust, right, in in Robert Sala. I had trust in D'Amico Ryans. And for whatever reason, that trust was not there with Steve Wilkes. And if you have to go through that, and if you're thinking about that, and you're thinking through that, then that's why you need to make a change because the trust is not there. And, you know, that's not necessarily anybody's fault. It's just the way things worked out. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.